Hey, and welcome back to Tim Larson's Tim's Notebooks uh, Tutorials page. Today we're going to tackle the subject of mocking up a page in Illustrator uh, using a pre-scanned, pre-made, penciled page and how it relates to laying in the word balloons and the text and just basically making it all look uh, ready and and readable and um, enough of a, of a composed page so that you can move on to the next step uh, inking and coloring the page and laying that in to have your finalized page but the mocking up process is really really important I think in that it helps us to catch a lot of mistakes and a lot of snags that you might have along the way so um, let's uh, look into that and after we uh, get back from um, that tutorial, we're going to do a, uh, a quick comic book review. To um, basically begin putting a comic book page together using a technique that I call mocking it up, uh, the first thing you want to do is to open up your Adobe Illustrator file. Go to that, and then I'll try and resize this here so that you can fit it in the in the screen here. Hang on, let's see. There we go. So I got pretty much. I got the page there. I got the page. Um, all laid out. I have a previous pages word balloons and details and information. Uh, once you get a, a page or two mocked up and you like it, I recommend just going <coughs> and creating the, the, the next pages um, off of previous page and just switch out the artwork and switch out the word balloons and everything. Um, let me First, uh, kind of back up a little bit, and I'll select the word balloon and the text over there. Everything else, I'm just going to kind of get rid of now. We'll delete that. Okay. Over here, I have the word balloon. I have the text. Let me push the text out of it. Let me uh, kind of show you these things one at a time here. In other videos, these will be explained a little bit better. But you can see how the text is arranged inside of a hexagon. Okay. And the neat thing about this is that you can resize it any way you want, and it still keeps the font and the font spacing coherent. There's a trick to that I'll show you in a later video. But anyway, just except for now that you have the... Um, word balloon of the other text here on another layer behind it uh, the word balloons and this comes with a tail I can double click this so that I'm selecting just the word balloon and let's just um, in isolation mode let's just delete that for now because we're gonna have different um, different tails different everything so anyway okay so we got some text we got a word balloon, and we have the um, the document. Let's lock off the word text and balloon, okay? And let's load in from a file. Uh, um, let's load in uh, page fifteen. Okay, so, so you select um, place. Oh, you have to, I'm sorry, you have to be on, okay, on this layer that's open, that's unlocked. Then you select place. And then you get a choice here, and then we'll uh, navigate around a bit until I get to... Um, 
Did I say 16? Okay. Uh, 16 Photoshop's document, page 16. We'll place it. And then you see the little alignment tool. Okay, and this is the penciled version of my page. It's not the finished one. So we'll go ahead and lock that off. And then as an added feature, what I'll do up here is create another layer and go with a rectangle that's going to be white and just cover that. And you'd be saying, oh, what are you doing? You're covering it up. Oh, hey, relax here. We'll change the opacity of that. We'll knock it down so that it's kind of like a shower curtain. Okay. You, you kind of, you can see through and see enough of the illustration, but it's not going to interfere with, um, your text and your word balloons, that's what you really want to see. You don't want the illustration to interfere with that. So let's go ahead and um, unlock this. And then the first thing you want to do, uh, when before you start really working on this, you want to go ahead and save this as something that's going to be saved. Okay, so we'll say save as, and this is just for mock-up purposes. So we'll go to the desktop and um, we'll just call this, uh, give it a name, comic page test. Okay. But of course, if this were really your comic book and let's say it was, um, you know, Action Man, maybe, maybe your abbreviation would be AM underscore uh, 001 for page 1 or 016 for page 16, say. If you had some kind of coherent naming convention and, and naming system so that you could immediately know which issue and which page this falls on, uh, that would be a good habit to get into when you do the, the naming. Now let's go ahead and um, we'll start laying in some dialogue here. Now it just so happens in my comic book, I'm happy with the font choices here. And, um, oh boy, it was a long time ago. This is issue four for me, for Mayfield 8. So it, it was really a matter of just kind of replicating what I've done in the past. And the previous pages worked fine. So like I said, I'm swatching, switching out uh, the artwork and switching out the words. Um, right now I'm using Zed Juice for the font choices. So let's go over to the script, hit that finder again, and here we are in the scripts and story arcs. Um, this is part four. Go into a Word doc, and hopefully this won't take too long to load. There's a two-step process here. Um, let me, while we're waiting for that to load, I'll kind of walk you through the the details of this page. Let me shut off that white rectangle layer so you can see. There we are. The pencils on this page, after I scanned them, they were boosted a little bit. You know, I changed, I upped the uh, contrast so that I could see uh, the action here and all that. See, is it no, I still don't see the word there are 16 here's page 16 in its entirety going all the way to where that line begins that's where page 17 starts so let's go ahead and highlight just everything okay we'll copy and then in some simple text editing software, this is text edit on a Mac. We'll make a new file. All right, and then we'll paste that. Now there's a quirk in here where the, um, the indentation is still in place. But so what I'll do, this is a, a line that's in a word balloon. We'll just elim eliminate the indentation. I'll double click it and hit delete. Now, 
all these are going to be words that are in the word balloon. Word balloons, okay. So let's take that first one in panel one. And I'll highlight that. Hit copy, control uh, option C, and then we'll get the other one highlighted ready for the next one here. And then we'll go to the Illustrator page. And in the dialog right here, let's just go ahead and uh, double click that and just highlight it all. Now hit Control V, paste, all right? There. And now you kind of can play it around with this and just look at it, make sure that it, um, You know, I'm playing well with it, and, and that the if you get this little red square here, it warns you that there's text that's not going to be shown. If they catch you, they won't just kill you; they'll take their time torching you, getting you to tell them about everything you, everyone you know, and then maybe uh, um, they won't just kill you. Let's highlight that. Now, of course, your script could have had instructions for that, like, say, you underline the text to let you know which ones have to be bolded, but let's just do that, okay? Then, um, so put it inside my balloon, and actually that balloon kind of fits right, but again, you can resize that. That looks pretty good. And I got the two layers here. I got the, the dialogue and the word balloons. <clears throat> I know there's going to be more script here. Let's take a look at the um, panel one. It's got one, two. Two has got one. All right. So if I hit the Option key, hold it down while I have the arrow selecting this. I can actually start cloning this and just simply make a whole bunch of these. There we go. Okay. Now on the next one, we just go to the uh, dialog layer and highlight it. Again, if it's conflicting, if you accidentally are selecting different layers, up here... You can always just simply um, hit the lock button there to lock off a layer that you don't want to manipulate. Let's go back to the script that's laid out in text edit. Okay, there's the next line. And the reason why I use text edit is that it clears out all the uh, font choices and all the formatting in case there's a weird wonky thing you had with the fonts and you don't want it to transfer into the uh, final comic book page. There we are. One by one, they'll maim and kill each one of those people, showing pictures of their bodies to you. That's before they kill you. Okay, how about before? That's before. Let's make that bold. Okay. And actually, this word balloon seems to be pretty good. It could be a little bit narrower, so let's go ahead and scoot that in a little. Okay. Oh, the other way. There we are. All right. So you got one chunk of text coming out of the woman in the phone booth, another chunk of text. And let's see what's happening in the script here. All right, and then I'll go ahead and copy that. Okay. 
and then there's the Banshees Motorcycle Club. You blew up their clubhouse. Let's get that a little closer. Okay. And then actually, let me grab this one over here. That's supposed to be the next one. Now, I'm not sure. This is going to be the response over the telephone. So I'm not sure if I want to do a an oval shaped um, you know oval shaped balloon here or elliptical, uh, but let's just um, go ahead and lay in the um, that was an accident. I didn't do anything. It's over the phone, so it's like that was an accident. I didn't do anything. Okay. <laughs> Uh, here we go on this template I had and this is a good idea to, for you to guys to have a, a kind of a cheat sheet this is exactly what it sounds like here I did a rectangle and then did the rough in the edges technique here and we'll just go ahead and copy that and into the layer with the word balloons we'll delete that we'll paste in this one And the neat thing about this is that it does change when you resize it so the rough edges are unique. And yeah, this works out fine. Whoops. You gotta unlock all the layers if you wanna move them. So the words I wanna unlock and move as well. And what this does when you mock things up, you really can get an idea, a feel for um, when you finish these pages, when you start inking them, what's important, what's not so important. Uh, like there might be things in the background that uh, aren't really that key that you can just go ahead and just not worry about the, the, de the detail. Like say, for example, the art on the wall here or the wood paneling, maybe there's going to be so much words uh, covering this that uh, it won't it'll make it irrelevant, okay? Um, let's see what's happening on the script again. Angelina, panel three, tell that to them. You can count on the Banshees arranging a reprisal. Word will spread fast. Expect to see an army of angry bikers showing up at your doorstep within the next 48 hours ready to stomp your ass into the ground. Now she's talking on the phone here. I'll go ahead and copy that. But it's kind of like, it's really kind of like this panel here. So let's just go ahead and just highlight that and delete it. We'll take this one, all right? Then hold down the option key. And she talks twice on the phone to him. So let's do that. And now take this text layer and we'll highlight all the text and we'll paste it and you notice we got that little red square uh, re uh, warning us hit the escape key now you, now you can oops now you can hold on to the handles now being that these panels are rectangular and not oval the the um, edges of the word thing here where I got them hexagons you might want to change them into um, into just rectangles but let's just see what it looks like yeah you know what let me try doing that let me try um, on this layer that is the word layer. I'll make a rectangle and we'll make sure that it's empty. Okay, you can't see it, but it's there. Then we'll take all this text here on the text layer, copy it, and now 
I have to hit the um, arrow key and then back to text again. So you notice it can't really see it on the screen here, but it changes into a circle when you hover over the edge of the rectangle you created. Go ahead and hit paste, control V. There. And we'll get rid of this one, which had the hexagonal. This one has a rectangular outside, and that might work a little better with uh, the rectangular word balloon. You know, mimicking. Uh, rectangular means like on the telephone, a machine. Over here, it didn't matter too much. You know, it was okay, but here there's more words, so the rectangular look, I think that does look better. Tell that to them. You can count on the Banshees. What if I make it narrower and longer? Because then tell that to them becomes one line. You always want to have about a letter's width or a letter's height around the word balloon at the closest edges. This isn't a hard and fast rule, but it, it's useful. Okay. Okay, so we're cooking pretty good here. Let's hold down the spacebar. You can move it that way. Hit the arrow key. Or act. Oh, this one right here. Let's just get rid of that. And there's more talking on this panel, so hold down the option key and move it again. Go inside and highlight that. Now let's go back to the script. There it is. Expect to see an army of angry bikers showing up at your doorstep within the next 48 hours, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's highlight that. Copy. And to save time, I'll highlight the next one I have to work on. That's going to be within the same panel still. Okay, yeah, it's a lot of talking on this one. Hit the escape button, and you'll get you'll be able to use play with the handle there. That looks really good. This is like a continuation of her words here. Okay. And I think I'll do a tutorial on constructing word balloons before we get into, you know, how did Tim Larson make the edges of that one all rough and everything. Let's assume that you you can manipulate word balloons. You can manipulate elements on an Illustrator page just for now. So that there's some of this stuff that might be a refresher, not exactly brand new to your eyes. All right, let's go back to the script. This is Calvin answering her, but he's not talking over the telephone. He's in the room and you're, it's as if you're overhearing him say something in the room. So it's a normal word balloon with that normal hexagonal uh, container. And then we gotta make this word balloon smaller now. I like to give him a lot of breathing room. Oh, and there's a really cool trick. Word balloons, if a character is saying something that is reacting in a laid back and ironic way to a lot of action on the page, like he's overcome with emotion, sometimes the word balloon can be large and the word can be small. And it's it's like going, oh, great, fine. You know, it, like a kind of ironic, like he should be saying a lot of things, but instead he's just kind of, you know, <laughs> saying something. Now we're down to the last two panels here. Let's zoom down here. Um, See, I've done this page before, so I'm just, I know that there's two uh, word balloons here. So we got that and that. Oops. When you're working on this and you're tired, it's so easy to, to accidentally like that, you accidentally cut off text. So I like that little feature with the red square that warns you. If you're just starting out and trying to get used to this, it's it's useful to lock off layers you're not using because you can accidentally click them and suddenly you're you're changing things you don't want to change.
the, the trick is you're trying to make it so that um, you're not drawing attention to how the the balloon is put together. You're, a person would be reading the the lines and not looking at how it's put together. And of course, there's less talking there, so smaller balloon. Okay. And I'll show you in just a few minutes here how they all connect together. This will be really cool. So anyway, we got uh, hookers, bartenders, psychiatrists. They know these things. People like to blab everything to them. I'm thinking of making a career change soon. And then he says, ha ha, which one? Like, she's a bartender in the story, and he's like saying, well, I, which one are you? Are you a bartender or a hooker? Or? He's like kind of making a joke. Okay. There you are. That's good. And I'm not going to do it here, but you can always... Um, the font size... Well, I'll show you for demonstration. Like, you can always boost it a little bit you know if uh, if you feel like it looks better that way it doesn't get lost in the shuffle I wouldn't get too wrapped up in that though it's only after you've done a couple of pages and you're kind of used to the process then you can start you know tweaking things a little bit here and there it's much better to just get used to the the boring plain you know peanut butter and jelly or <laughs> vanilla oopsie shouldn't have grabbed that process churning out page after page before getting fancy so don't worry about getting fancy just just get it accurate there we go then she has one last thing to say oh hey you know what that had the hexagon this one does not let's copy this one instead okay i'm not kidding go to another town and start over calvin Two exclamation points. Now here's the rules in my page here. The phone on the hearing end is doing the talking. This comic's set in the 1970s, that's why they're using, there's no cell phones, it's pay phones, phone booth, etc. And she's talking to this kid in the motel room and the motel has its own phone so okay so she's talking out of the phone booth here and um here's what you want to do when you make the tails so we'll shut all we'll lock off the dialogue now we're just in the caption level you want to use the uh white arrow that's the formatting one and just click one of the balloons that way the next thing you draw with the pen tool is going to be formatted the same way. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And here's, we'll, we'll select pen. And I believe you start in the balloon. And then you point to the character, holding down the button, you curve the line a little bit. And then here you trim it off with, uh, you'll see the little, v-shaped icon as you're hovering over it now i just trimmed off that half of it and then you go up into the balloon pick a point and you kind of stretch it this takes a little practice to kind of play with a little bit and that's okay it's not perfect but it's all right then you hit the letter v to turn that into an object and then either Hit that icon again, or letter P to get the pen tool. And now, I just I don't want to do two word, uh, two tails going to her. I want this word balloon to continue that one. So I'm just going to make a and let me see if I can highlight there. Okay, you see that's a um, 
it's just a bridge. It doesn't have to have a closure on the other end, but it, it it's a bent bridge. It, they look nicer than to just do a simple straight line rectangle. And that I learned after making it a couple of pages. It just aesthetically looks better that way. Let's hit the escape key. Or no, escape key, there we go. Okay. And then you click one of these elements and then hold down the shift key and you click all the other elements you want included. There you are. And it's in the uh, Pathfinder dialog box, the shape modes. And you hold down the option key and you highlight the uh, first one down here, the, the rectangle, overlapping the rectangle. Boom. And what that did, see what that did is this erased all the uh, crossover lines and turned it into one thing that um, there now let's say the word the tail isn't quite not quite happy with that you can always just double click that and rotate it move it in a little bit you know and hold down the escape key boom and you've changed that but you haven't changed anything else let's go into this trickier panel now and she's talking herself so we'll just go ahead and make a tail all right letter v to close that off and let's Pick, choose that, and then shift, choose that. Like I said, option and pathfinder, the overlap shape mode. Okay. Now here's the tricky part here. Um, you can have the tail be all sorts of things for a phone. For me personally, I kind of like the hokey, old-fashioned lightning bolt <laughs> format. So here's what I'm gonna do for that. And I, I think all I gotta do is start again in the in the balloon itself. And I'm not even um, holding down the button, I'm just clicking the button several times. Let me show you that to you, okay? And you ask yourself, Tim, how'd you make that? Well, it was so small on the screen, I can't tell. I'll do it again, just to show you. Now you see, when you, when you move your mouse after clicking, it bends it. So let's not do that then. You just hold it straight, okay? Now, I mean, I did kind of a problem because I should have began up above here, but let's see if I can't. I think you can just hover over it. There we go. Yeah. You can also hover over it and connect to that line. You see how easy it is to make that. Okay. Let's just you know, we'll delete that. Oh. There we go. Okay, good. But then we'll select this and connect that. Let's see how the page is looking. It's looking pretty cool. So let me just go in and um, the listening end of the phone is doing the sound. So that's why the tail is going that way. Maybe the connector can be like a lightning bolt too. Okay. And then 
They say the word tail should generally point to the mouth. And I think all those little rules, most of them you don't have to memorize. But it's really nice to uh, just get the experience in, really. Now here's one where, okay, here's an example. Let me pull this up. That looks kind of ugly. So you can hit the white um, arrow key and you got to click it a couple of times, but you can turn it into something where you can now manipulate the uh, a certain line out of the uh, object. So that's what I just did there. Hitting V, Shift, there we go. Option, and let's, um, see the reason why you don't want to highlight everything on your page and then do that Option V thing is that you might want to change one small element on your page and there's something about the memory in Illustrator where it's going to, uh, it's going to just assume you want everything changed. So you try to group it into only the elements that uh, that matter to each other. Okay, like let's say I wanted to change this here, but not anything else. If I had done the um, the Pathfinder thing in down here, and just did it in one fell swoop on everything on the page, it'd be really hard to separate just this one word balloon from the rest of the stuff because the Illustrator document would be assuming I want to change everything. Okay. Uh, and that's just from experience. I learned that you kind of, you know. So go back to the pen, into the balloon first, and she's talking. So there. One little thing I did not mention was it is important to see the script before you start penciling the page, unless it's going to be like a, um, you know, like a fight scene, or if there's very little dialogue, it's not going to how the page is composed isn't going to matter in terms of dialogue. Um, but this one does because there's a, there's a pretty fair amount of talking. And I just want to make sure that the word balloons can live on the page just like the characters. Whoops, I hit the wrong button. There we go. There we, okay, sorry, hit the wrong button. But it's all good. I found the right button. All right, and then he's talking, ha ha, which one? That's Calvin talking, okay. Angelina's the woman in the phone booth. And when you get good at these tales, you can just make them on the fly. And they're really easy and fun. There we go. And then lastly, noise coming out of the phone. A typical page takes 15 to 30 minutes to letter, assuming you've picked out the uh, font choices and the line weight and the style of the balloons, and you're not designing that as well. Okay, so there's my page. Now the art looks very gauzy and and wavy. That's because I, I, in, I introduced this layer here the rectangle let's just delete that and say yeah okay now it's darker now you can see it and here's what I'm talking about with the illustration aspect we'll shut off the word balloons and I can show you like in penciling the page there's a significant amount of talking and I wanted to have a lot of dead space up here that would not matter. I'm literally, sometimes when I'm penciling the page, I'm, I'm holding my thumb or my fingers in front of my eye and imagining, you know, big ellipticals, big circles covering stuff up. Covering stuff up. And also down here, um, this is important. Let's go like this. Um, who's talking first? She's... 
let's turn this on. I forgot. She's saying something, and then there's something on the phone. Therefore, the phone has to have the listening end in a natural spot where the next word balloon could point to. Okay? If I flip this, and she was talking, and the phone was... I'm trying to describe this. And, like, she was holding the phone in the other hand, okay? Then... It'd be a problem because how do I point the tail to the phone when the phone's reading this image left to right is the first thing and her face is the second thing, okay? The conversation has her saying something first and Calvin responding on the phone second. So her face is on the left, the phone's on the right. There's a case where after doing a few pages of this, I have the characters there switching hands on the phone, which people don't do. <laughs> but that's all because, okay, like here, see Calvin's holding his phone right here? Now he's holding it there. Holding it there. Why did he change hands? Well, because the phone has the first balloons on this panel, and he talks next, so he's second. Therefore, the phone has to be first, he has to be second. She's all alone here, so it doesn't matter, but uh, I, I drew this with a, an intentional upward look because the um, that leaves me with a lot of space here. And then again, you know, he's talking, and I had this really weird, why did he switch hands with the phones? But it's all because I want the word balloons to work okay that's the um the key way of mocking up a penciled page that i feel is a very important step in creating a finished comic book page when i ink this page and basically switch this out and put in the, the finished ink pages there might be some cases where th things moved a tiny bit, or it'll look better if I can move, you know, um, like maybe, you know, it would look better if I move this over there. You know, that's fine. You know, a little tweaking is fine here and there, but this is like 85, 90% ready to go. Okay. And I hope that that has been useful for people to understand why it's important to uh, save the penciled stage. Um, oh, one, one last thing too, and you don't see it here, but l let's say I made a huge mistake in the penciled stage and uh, somebody's arm is in the wrong spot and I could easily erase those pencil lines and put the arm down, <laughs> down below. Or, uh, or there were, actually there was one panel where I had a character right in the middle and she didn't have to be in the panel. And there was a lot of talking, and all you saw was like the top of the hair on her head. And I thought, oh, just get rid of her then. She she walked out of the room, okay, or walked out of the scene. And that was fine, because if there's so little visual information outside the panel, uh, outside the word balloon, that you can't really tell what's going on anyways. So uh, that's it in a nutshell. You have your page with the characters interacting, but then you also have your word balloons and the words, and you got to treat them like they're a character too. So this page had really three characters going on. You know, the, the man, the woman, and then the words that they say. All right. Thank you very much for watching this. Hope to see you again on the next one. Thank you for watching that tutorial. And now a quick uh, review that I found on Reddit of a man named uh, Devin Wades. He has a um, gun-wielding vigilante comic book, and we'll go right to that and uh, do a little bit of a critique. Should be fun. Devin Wades made a 12-page um, 
story, uh, which is untitled, but uh, commenters on Reddit have called it Jackpot. So that's what I'm going to go with is Jackpot. On the first page, we have our hero who has gone through a long, long ways to get to Yum Yum Uncle Chuck's. Okay. Huff, huff, I made it. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, I got this. Okay, here we go. Walk into the door. The lettering's pretty good. It's pretty um, coherent. I can see it, you know, see it pretty uh, clearly. Ugh, my head. And then he, I have a question, like, he vomits, but he's wearing a mask. So how does he vomit out the mask? <laughs> does he have to take it off? Is there a special hose tube that goes straight outside? Or is he just not caring if there's some bits of green vomit stuck to the inside of his mask? The two guns, click, click. That's pretty good. This leads up to the next page. And then, this is really good. The strong foreshortening. The gun right literally in your face. Crashing open the door. With the crash behind the character. Okay. But then suddenly, standoff. Is that the name of the... Maybe it should be called standoff and not jackpots. <laughs> I like how the bartender's just pouring the drink still. And <laughs> some guys are just standing there. There's there's maybe three guys that are right at attention. Um, Chuck's office is back there. And over here we have... What is it? Like He's pointing the gun. But then he falls asleep, Z, Z, Z. <laughs> but then he wakes up again and starts shooting. So there's a little incoherent what's really happening here. But the beginning's good with him jumping in and getting the, the drop on everybody. Let's keep going here. There was shooting, but then nobody's injured. Okay, get the boss. Tell him jackpot's here. Oh, he's talking. Oh, wait a minute. He's supposed to be talking? Yeah, we got a problem with the balloon tails here. Um, that's where um, you know, he's get the boss tone. I'm assuming the guy who entered in the room is saying that. But the balloon tail. Oh, I get it. He's the hero is incapacitated because he fell asleep. He's sick, and the bad guy's henchman has grabbed him. And he's going get the boss. Tell him jackpot's here. Okay, so he he recognizes jackpot. All right, I get it. But wait a minute. He gets the jump on him. He takes his own gun out of his holster and shoots him. Well, that's pretty good. I like the idea. The execution is going to need some work to really make that. Here's the problem sometimes when you when you try and uh, you know make things happen. The um, There's too much action happening in one panel. Like he reached, let's zoom in way, way in here. Like he reached in to get the gun. Okay. <laughs> Forgive me, I'm really zooming into this panel on the second page. He's being held up by the bad guy, but he's got a free hand that can reach for his gun. The bad guy's gun, that is whip it around, and then blast him through the abdomen. <sighs> then he takes that same gun, and it's got one, two, three, four, five shots in it. Well, that's plausible. Okay, it's a six-shooter. There's five shots going off. Every shot's a kill shot. He got everybody. All right. So where this comic strip or comic book uh, lacks in in finesse in being able to tell a story, it, it does make up for it in just sheer action happening. Okay, 
I think when you're starting out, you should really think about that. Like, just just have stuff happen, you know. <laughs> and then it may work, may not. Who cares? You know, the, the idea is to have fun with this thing. This is really cool. I like the pirouetting helicopter flip around. Blam, 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 blam. Bullets go everywhere. None of them hit. Um, he's got two extra guns, black ones, that are bigger under his jacket. Okay, let me, let me go up to the beginning here. He had these two guns that look like uh, Smith & Wesson's, uh, I mean, no, a Colt, uh, what are they called? Colt 1912s? And yeah, these look like, um, a bigger gun like a magnum or uh, <laughs> it's a it's a dark color anyway it's a bigger gun and he's got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen shots in these guns wow they must be like yeah they have they have a clip they don't have a revolver chamber they, they have a clip well it could be the same anyway he's got guns boom 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 pure wedding more dancing. I like this one here that's kind of like uh, above the, what would that be, uh, a fly's point of view, like looking up from the ceiling on down and shooting the speed lines, pushing them against this wall. Maybe the recoil on the guns, pushing them against the wall. There's a heck of a lot of action here, and there's a lot to see, so let's go and it's kind of falling away a little bit in terms of quality like this just a tiny bit less uh attention to the quality in the previous panels and again the tables and furniture and chairs moving over there's this what is this bullets whizzing by and hitting things and knocking them over getting this guy Click, click, shit, I need to reload. Click. Well, what is this? His, he's clicking. Like, cocking the gun back, is that it? And, and pressing, pressing it against the brim of his hat. <laughs> okay. And he's still sick. Blurg. Oh, but he, he shoots him anyway. Bang. Not a bad turnout for such a dive. Ugh, I need some aspirin. All right, time to give a boss a spanking. Yo, Chuck! Kick. Boom. We need to talk. I guess you got the floor since you killed all my men. Well, yeah, no shit. <laughs> hey. Give me a break. You're acting like you haven't had them try to kill me like 15 times already. All right. It's just basically, I'm going to kill you, you kill me kind of story here. So he gets the last guy, busts into Chuck's office. I need a gun that can kill a devil. This is really bizarre. So he's putting his boots up on his table like he's going to strike a deal with this guy. And he needs a gun that can kill a devil. All right. So let's back up here. It's not really well established why he's going into Chuck's or why he's sick. That could have been helped by some kind of narration, some kind of storyline that you understand this character and understand his dilemma. Because right now he doesn't have a dilemma other than he's got two big guns and he's throwing up. And this kind of thing where the hero enters a, a room, a bar, and it's just automatically shooting, shooting, shooting. Again, that's not really well explained. Um, if you're drawing on a scratch pad and you just want to create action scenes, that's one thing. But if you're trying to script a comic book page and make it into something that a reader can follow and understand, then you're, you're missing the mark here. So 
and I get it. I get this idea that maybe he's sleeping and he's getting punished, you know, because he's, he's slacking. He didn't hurt anybody yet. He just crashed in there. But then the turnaround where he grabs his gun, kills that first guy. Um, I don't know. I think I would have rewritten this a little bit where the hero, let's call him Jackpot, um, needs to talk to the boss early on, and that's understood. Like, here in this page, I need to talk to the boss. I need to talk to Uncle Chuck. And then they don't want him to talk to Uncle Chuck. And he shoots all these guys. And maybe at the end, when he barges into Uncle Chuck's office, he, Uncle Chuck could explain those guys are not worth anything to him anyways. Um, but uh, I don't know, like maybe you killed them, therefore you owe me all this uh, reparations. How am I going to replace them? Um, and maybe the hero jackpot here, he could explain, I got a big giant job that uh, if I bring you in on it, this will be worth more than all the men that you could find in the in this region. <laughs> okay, I don't know. So I like the idea that it's a turnaround, like he's trying to tr strike a deal at the very end, but I just, I don't really see the connecting story here. Kid, you really pissed me off. I'm gonna crush those tiny little nuts of yours. Uh, well, you're stupid and fat. Don't make me shoot you, idiot. Yeah, it, listen, Bozo, I need you to get me a gun. I need a gun that can kill a devil. Well, let's go over like that page right there with, um, right here with um, the pirouette. This is really good. That's where you take a chance visually, the jacket falling down, the legs swimming and kicking. You don't even need these speed lines, really. I mean, it kind of tells you the story anyways. But um, And I like the sideward swish. He pulls out. He, he throws the, the guns out of his jacket and grabs them. Okay. That's cool. Um... So the action works well. The story is not so tight. And if your excuse is to say, well, I just want to cobble together a bunch of pages of action, I don't eh, I don't think that's good enough. I think a person who's reading this would want to follow, you know, why is the hero doing this? And what are the stakes? Maybe the hero needs, his goal is inside of Chuck's and he's sick to begin with, so he may not succeed. All right, so turn the few pages and see if he does. And usually in a scene like this, not to put too fine of a point on it, in most of like Westerns and spaghetti Westerns and a Tarantino movie, uh, most of the time the hero, when he first encounters the brute group of thugs, he gets beaten up, you know, he loses right away, starts to lose, and it's just assumed that the other guys are just way too big and powerful for him. So, um, he's got to pick himself up off the ground and prove a point. A really good movie was Terrence Stamp in The Limey, and I think that came out in like 1995, 97, something like that. And he's basically an old man just got out of prison and he found out his daughter who got mixed up with a high profile uh, businessman died of a died uh, got thrown over a cliff probably got killed and he's come to the man's the businessman's warehouse to get some answers and it's populated by all these thugs right they they do normal stuff during the day but the understanding is like any intruder they get you know shown the door and they get their face punched in and whatever 
So they grab the old man, Terrence Stamp, and grab him and punch him and kick him and beat him and beat him and beat him. And then they haul him off, drop him. <laughs> you know, the camera stays on the ground, and way in the distance is the warehouse. They pick him up, and they come closer and closer to you on the camera, right? They drop him. Come back here next time, we'll kill you. And then they walk away, and they walk in the distance back into the building. And then the camera doesn't move, the shot doesn't end. Terrence Stamp, the limey, gets up again. He's got a little gun tucked in the back of his pants and just pulls it out and walks straight into the warehouse. And all you see is flash, flash, flash. No, wait, wait, what are you doing? Bam, 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 bam. Just, and they didn't show it, but it's understood that he just went in and just killed uh, five guys in a row. Cold blood. Boom, 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 boom. And then there's a, one last guy running for his life out the building, and he's yelling at him as he's walking past him, Tell him I'm coming! That is a well-knit scene. I, I would suggest, you know, if the, the artist to this comic strip is watching this video, then look that up on Google. Um, Terrence Stamp, S-T-A-M-P. The movie's called The Limey. And search it on YouTube, and you'll find like like revenge scene. Um, it, it's got a, the actor who portrayed uh, Piney from Sons of Anarchy in his younger days. So it, it's it's interesting to see. Uh, you know, he's an old man in Sons of Anarchy. He passed away last year, um, but it's interesting to see that stuff uh, pop up once in a while. But yeah, check out the Limey, and you'll understand what I'm talking about about uh, entering the scene of hostile people and getting revenge or getting you know making your 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 force known and it'll give you some ideas on how to structure your story because so far you got a really cool page with the with the pirouette here and some really cool stuff but i think all together you need to work a little bit on scripting that's all i gotta say there uh devin thank you very much for submitting this on reddit and i hope you, this reached you and you watched it on youtube and keep up the good work thank you Thanks for watching that. Uh, I hope you got something out of that critique and about uh, mocking up a pencil page. And be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I am in the process of getting these out to the public uh, every other week. So that, um, let's see, what's today is... Um, today's February 20th. That would make the next one would land on uh, March 6th would be the next one. And I don't know what the subject is, but I guess you should uh, stay tuned and find out what it is. We'll see you then.